welcome back to your youtube channel storage automation campus this is god of here again i don't want to uh, increase the size of my video uh, previous video unnecessarily that video is already almost near to 16 minutes uh, but it is important for us to uh, discuss and understand um, z explorer first uh, properly before we jump into uh, the development using NetApp on tap api uh, this tool is really powerful tool and i want you to understand this tool properly i want you to uh, spend some time on this tool because this is going to save you a lot of time in the development uh, if you understand any api properly so uh, without wasting time i will show you how to use this tool so as we have seen before like uh, how we will use version api this time i'm going to show you uh, let's start with aggregate so you can simply to understand any api how what api works for what purpose you can simply go here and sim drop your uh, mouse pointer on this and it will tell you the information how the tool api is going to work on that so let's say if i want to see what are the different aggregates in my uh, on tap system i may need to run on the aggr get iter um, api which basically iterate over the list of aggregates so let's use uh, this api for our test purpose i will simply uh, drag this api in here And you can see that uh, once I drag it here, I have automatically attached or automatically populated on the right hand side in this portion of the tool. And once you expand these selections, let me give you some information about these selections. So in most of the APIs um, like this aggregate list um, or volume list or export list or, or something like these kind of APIs you will see uh, common <clears throat> parameters which is like uh, max record or tag um, or query so uh, basically it tells you that one API max record is something which tells you one AP when you will run any API how many uh, records at a time it can pull so you can see the maximum number of records it can return in by default is 20 so if you have more than 20 aggregates on your uh, environment in your uh, on tap cluster so you may need to increase this value so you will simply uh, double click on the okay you will add it here and you will say let's say you want to make it 40 you will say i want to see 40 there is always a limit on this and which depends uh, which is different for each kind of api and i mean like the max record limit for the aggregate would be different uh, from the uh, volume api or from the export apis then you have a, a tag and the next tag uh, which is again one of the important uh, feature after this so you can see that specify the tag for from the last call it is usually not specified from the first call so tag basically is uh, i will give you example of the volume let's say you have uh, or or let's take example of the q tree so let's say you have some 5000 q trees in your uh, on tap uh, system or in your cluster and you want to generate the list of all the q trees so but your max record does not support more than 500 q trees in that case tag is comes in picture a tag basically says that okay i am generating the list of q trees and when i am generating the list of q trees uh, i am done up to here so uh, i have started from uh, the top from the first q tree and i am done up to five q tree uh, number 500 and on that i have put a tag called abc or something and from 
that tag I need to start again the iteration so the, the next iteration would start from that tag so you will take that tag all the time and you will tell the API or the program that you need to run this the, you will tell to the program that you need to run this API again where the tag was ABC so that next counting will start from 501 it will not start from 1 so all the time you will do use the tag uh, you you may have a different tag let's say you have first tag on 500 you have second tag on uh, 1000 you have third tag on 1500 so you will have a different tag values you will pass those tag values using the programming language and you will show to the user uh, to the you will tell to the api that uh, sorry you will tell to the programming language that generate the list of the q trees from that tag onwards uh, and i am just trying to spend more time here uh, in this section because uh, in the test environment i may not be able to develop 5000 q trees or i may not have 5000 q trees for you to show that that as example but uh, yes if you uh, try to develop it in your um, environment in your office environment in your production environment and if you face any issue do let me know we will try to work together on that and i will see how i can help you to generate and use the tags so tag is also one of the important part let's go back on our aggregate um, api so uh, query uh, and uh, attributes these are the different so once you click on this you can see what different attributes are possible out of this uh, aggregate like is 64 bit aggregate is what is the red uh, uh, attributes what is the ownership uh, uuid aggregate name and all this information then same goes with query as well where again you say, see the same attributes so i generally have a practice that um, i do in I, in this tool i i do not use these parameters i do not even use a uh, max record or something until unless i am assured that uh, my records are not very high so for example in this case i am not going to use max record uh, because i know the number of uh, aggregates are not very high and it is not going to um, slow down the api calling so i'll go ahead and re delete this i may not need tag because the number of aggregates again are very less so i will go ahead and delete this also i don't want to specify any particular attribute to be out i want to catch all the attribute so it's not like i am going to catch only one attribute i'm going to get all the attribute so i'm going to delete even these two also so let me remove it from here so now i have simple uh, aggregate get iter api and on here you can see that this is what i have the uh, the development or this is how uh, how to call that api that kind of code is already being developed uh, already developed by the tool so let me show you one more important thing which probably i missed here so once you add this portion here in the execute and without deleting if you see this code is very big and code is very big because right now i have not deleted all these of things so as soon as you delete all these parameters you will notice that code has been reduced so because i'm using all the uh, uh, i'm using simple api and i want to return all the parameters out of that now come back here on execute click on play button okay i am not connected to let me connect to the server So I am connected here and you can see it has already executed uh, the 
it has already executed uh, this API you can see here that this is the all the information about, it is giving me about the uh, aggregates let me see how many aggregates even I have so you can see here that um, now this is you can see I have two aggregate one is AGGR 0 test cluster 01 and then SVM root AGGR these two aggregates I have so let me see here what we are getting so you can see um, let me search it test cluster 01 this is one this is the name of the cluster where aggregate is located on our name I'm not interested in aggregate name so you can see the first aggregate AGGR 0 test 01 is here and I can confirm that AGGR 0 test 01 this is in the first cluster what I have first uh, aggregate what I have perfect then you have you should have the second one let me put it in C so that we can get it okay the second one SVM root AGGR yes that is correct SVM root AGGR which is perfect so I can sh see uh, both of my aggregate over here so uh, basically you can see this is how I am using now the uh, come back to the reason why we are using this tool is now you know why you should use this tool if you were not aware how to use this API what would be the code how you will use this code uh, what would be the output what are different parameters you may need or you not may not need so uh, it is important with this tool that you can make a decision how I am going to use this API in my code in my Python code and then it would be easy for you to uh, you know you are not you not need to spend more time in, in, in the Python side so yeah, all the understanding would be clear over here and you can uh, we will see how well, we will be we will get rid of all these unnecessary uh, attributes uh, in Python and we will only concentrate on what we are looking for not not the different uh, parameters what we don't need so uh, that is all uh, about uh, the Z Explorer tool or Z Explorer and uh, it is very important to understand this tool and uh, that is the reason I wanted to have another video about uh, this tool so uh, I, I, I guess we are done right now with this tool if, if needed probably I will create another video uh, but um, I, I will see if we can uh, jump now onto the coding or uh, we will be keep using this tool time to time during our upcoming videos but um, I, I will try to jump onto the coding uh, part now and uh, uh, let see you in uh, upcoming videos guys so keep watching and don't forget to subscribe uh, Stories Automation Campus. Thank you again.